without further ado, this is the Witch Queen. Oh my god, James. Sabathun is serious. I think she's the most dangerous villain we've faced yet. Seven years we've been building up to this moment, and she is finally stepping into the spotlight and showing us who she really is. What we know about light and darkness is proving to be way more complex than what we previously thought. There are so many lies, truths, and revelations that we're gonna get to in The Witch Queen and the year leading up to it. I mean, we're paying off these narrative threads that go all the way back to Destiny's origins, and we're supporting it with the best content that Destiny has to offer. Definitely, and we've got a lot of awesome content to show today. And let's start with the most mysterious destination yet. Yeah. Sabathun's throne world. This is an uncharted wonderland of secrets and lies. It's this place that she's created in her own image, this surreal and majestic light-blessed world. She has this castle that she rules from. It overlooks this dark, swampy underbelly with this lone pyramid ship out there. It's the future world she wanted to create built atop the darkness that she left behind. And throne worlds, they're a deep part of Destiny lore. Powerful entities create these pocket universes, and when we're there, we have to play by their rules. But now, our own light powers are being used against us. I mean, she has this whole army of hive that she's ascended to the light and brought along with her. These are the hive guardians, and they are the backbone of her new army. We've talked a lot. Let's show a little. Let's take the first ever look at the Witch Queen gameplay. Savathun, the Witch Queen, Hive God of Cunning and Lies. After the death of her brother Oryx, Savathun went into hiding. Not out of fear, of course, but out of strategy. <laughs> In her greatest trick yet, stealing our most sacred resource. The one thing we thought she could never touch. The light.
I cannot wait just to reach out and just crush a hive ghost in my hand. Yeah, I mean, we've been defined by the light for so long. This is uncharted territory for us. I mean, we're in strange new places. Like, the throne world, it's haunting, but it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. There's a lot to love. There's a few things we saw in the trailer that we haven't talked about yet. Savathun and her lucent brood. This is the biggest threat Guardians have faced yet, so we need to find new weapons to match their power. The Glaive. I love this thing. It's brutal and elegant. It's this new energy weapon with melee abilities, mid-range projectiles, and defensive capabilities. It's our first ever first-person melee weapon, and it is such an awesome tool for the battlefield. The Glaive feels so good. Just jump in and unleash these brutal melee combos and transition right to an energy blast. It's really powerful and has a lot of utility. Yeah. So, we've told you about what the Glaive can do. Now let's talk about how you're gonna get your hands on one. These weapons don't come out of chests at the end of missions and you're not gonna find one roaming around the throne world. Your first Glaive is not going to be found. It's going to be built. Yes, weapon crafting is coming to Destiny 2. Now, chasing weapons has been an integral part of the Destiny Pursuit game since the beginning. And over the years, we've added more deterministic paths to get the roles that you want on guns. Think things like Umbral Engrams and the Raid Chest. Weapon crafting unlocks the freedom to choose all that and more. It gives us ultimate control over the guns. Now, this is a combat-focused crafting and progression system. That means the more you use these weapons, the more objectives you complete with them, the more you'll level them up, and the more powerful they grow over time. And at launch, here's the awesome thing. You'll be able to craft all Throne World weapons, new raid weapons, and the seasonal weapons. There's just a ton of stuff to do in this system. And the Witch Queen is just the beginning of weapon crafting. We have plans to add more craftable weapons, both legacy and new, throughout the year. We've seen and we've talked about a lot of really cool features, but let's get right into the meat of it. Let's talk about the Witch Queen campaign. I love campaigns. They've always been a cornerstone of the Destiny experience. They're rich, deep stories interwoven with big combat sequences and memorable characters. They take us to remote worlds in our ever-changing universe. And so we're putting extra care into the campaign for the Witch Queen. We want you to feel those goosebumps when you step onto the throne world for the first time and come face to face with Hive Guardians. And every one of the missions has its own unique fantasy. Like, what does it feel like to storm a castle or just go straight into the depths of hell? If you like games with standalone campaigns like Doom, Titanfall 2, God of War, and Halo, then the Witch Queen is for you. So, in addition to our classic normal mode, Legendary is our tougher, aspirational version of the campaign, where the enemies hit harder and respawning is heavily restricted. So every battle is a gut punch. Every boss is a worthy adversary. It's gonna hurt. <laughs> you might tap out. But if you persist and you get to the end, your time will be well rewarded. Whether you want to play solo or with a fire team, the difficulty will scale based on how many people you bring. Before we go, one last trip down memory lane. I remember camping out the Predator for Destiny 1 because I just had to have the ghost. To me, it was like the symbol of destiny. And if you care about that stuff like me, you're going to want to get your hands on the Collector's Edition because you're going to get a hive buddy to go up on the shelf with it. Wow, that was so cool. Oh, I'm man. so I'm so excited for this one. And that's mm -hmm. not even everything that's in there, too. I know. Those are the hero items, and they're, I think, one of the best ones that we've ever done. Collector's editions have always been like this really perfect jumping point to enter the worlds that we build and actually lifting like in-world objects and putting them in players' hands is just it's just a good feeling. We don't just put random items. Everything in there means something, and it helps push the narrative. And there might be some puzzles to unlock in there as well.
So at this point, you can see Sabathun has been one of our greatest threats, operating behind the scenes for years. You may have heard of her brother, the Taken King, but Sabathun is the most dangerous being we've ever faced. She's cunning, elusive, she works in the shadows, so in a way, Sabathun is new to all of us. Exactly, and now it's time to finally see this legend reveal herself and change the Destiny universe forever. But when we talk about the overarching story of Destiny, we don't just mean the plot lines or characters that feature release to release. Narrative is a guiding force in Destiny, and we're calling on its rich history of world building, bringing that to the forefront and growing it in a bold new direction. So when you join the game today, you'll experience an immediate call to action alongside millions of your fellow Guardians. During this past year, we watched the results of your actions play out across Destiny's seasonal releases. You've redeemed old foes, brought former enemies to the bargaining table, learned that there's always more than one side to every story, and built alliances no one ever thought possible. And on the largest scale, you'll experience a vast, living, interconnected world of stories that's striving to a greater end. We need you, Guardian. You'll experience this alongside a massive community of Guardians, release after release, Together, this is our universe's cosmic purpose. This 10-year journey we've been on since Destiny 1, it's drawing to its dramatic conclusion. The light and darkness saga will end. But make no mistake, Destiny 2 will not. We're building not so much to an ending, but more to this transformative moment for Destiny 2's future. Last year, we announced The Witch Queen and the following expansion, Lightfall. And now we're excited to announce the release after Lightfall, the final chapter in the Light and Darkness saga, Destiny 2, The Final Shape. It's going to be one wild, continuous ride. Yes, and that ride starts with Season of the Lost. Not only is it the prologue to The Witch Queen, it's your first opportunity to interact with Sabathun. But rather than spoil it for you, why don't we take a look? If we are to survive the coming storm, the tower and the dreaming city must stand united. We are surrounded, a ring of spears pointing inward from the edges of our system. The Witch Queen is no less dangerous now than she has ever been. We must uncover whatever secrets she knows with the time that we have. Relight the pathways of the Ascendant Plane and guide my people back to me. There is a malevolent force at work in this plane, Guardian. needed. save us all. Seasons have gone through massive transformations since Shadowkeep. We're dedicated to creating an evolving, interconnected world that puts your guardian at the center of the action. We're reaching the end of one journey and the beginning of another. The days of Destiny's biggest story moments happening in lore pages is long gone. I mean, Mara's return has been hinted at forever, and now it's happening in a season. One of the changes I'm most excited about are the updates to the light subclasses every season in year five of Destiny 2. We're adding aspects and fragments similar to stasis. We'll be starting with the Void subclass update that goes live alongside the Witch Queen. But the Witch Queen is only the beginning of what's to come, and Season of the Lost is the prologue to that story. It starts off with Marasov's return to the Dreaming City, and with her return, all the Awoken technology comes alive. But the Hive God of War, Zebul Wrath, has reemerged and has Guardians and Mara in her sights. Guardians must forge a path through the Ascendant Plane to save Mars' Lost Covenant of Witches before Zebul Wrath 
can reach them. And to aid you in this task, you'll have the Wayfinder's Compass. The time is at hand. The beacon is shining bright and the ley lines are set in place. It's an ancient awoken artifact that gives the wielder the power to uncover pathways, secrets, and treasures within the Ascendant Plane. There's a plethora of new weapons coming, including a suite of legendary stasis guns that will stop your enemies cold. The armor makes you feel like you're a member of Queen Mars Court. And no season is complete without new exotics, and Season of Lost features one once intended for Aldrin. Let's take a moment to talk about Trials. So Trials of Osiris is the in-game aspirational PvP activity and more popular than ever. Two of the biggest ads from our community have been adding anti-cheat and adding matchmaking. In Season of the Lost, we're doing both. We've partnered with BattleEye to soft launch the anti-cheat software when Trials goes live on September 10th. Also, you'll be able to matchmake with groups of players to form fire teams or solo queue by yourself. And we've remixed how rewards are distributed to give all players the opportunity to earn some of the best weapons and coolest armor in the game. That's right. We're shifting away from winning matches as a primary way to earn loot, and instead, winning individual rounds and completing matches will allow you to earn some rewards. But going flawless hasn't changed. So if you want to flex those PvP skills, the flawless chest will still be the only place to earn adept trials weapons and unique cosmetics. All right, so the next chapter in Destiny begins right after this stream with Season of the Lost. Return to the Dreaming City with Marisov and learn the mystic art of wayfinding. I'm so excited Crossplay is going live today. And today is your first opportunity to jump into Destiny with friends on any platform from all over the world playing together. As a company that prides itself on taking care of its employees and, and their significant others and their communities and those who are in need, it's pretty devastating as we look at the racism in America. And uh, our intention is to do better and to leave the world in a better place. We want to be a part of that social change. Fuck racism. We don't just stop with the games that we make, but we really utilize the successes that we've seen to be able to give back in an even greater capacity that spans beyond uh, just the gaming industry. Thank you, Foundation. Thank you. Pressing button. We're live! <laughs> <laughs> Destiny servers in line. This adventure has begun. It's awesome to have you here. Yeah. 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 This game is going to single-handedly destroy my social life, and I can't wait. All right, Guardian. Time to kick him where it hurts.
This is great. Anyone want a hug? Hugs? No? No hugs. How do you follow that? <laughs> wow, 30 years. And I, I, I remember when Halo first launched and my friends and I completed the entire campaign in a single epic play session. And as the credits rolled, I knew that, that Bungie had transformed console gaming forever and that, that I would be a lifelong fan. Yeah, it changed how we played games too. I remember getting together with friends for Halo weekend LAN parties. We had so much fun. And 30 years of Bungie games is something special. It's something worth celebrating yes. together. So we're gonna have a party in Destiny 2. Starting this December, we are launching the Bungie 30th anniversary celebration in Destiny 2. Free for all players, the 30th anniversary celebration will offer a new six player match made activity, secrets to unravel, and rewards that commemorate our long and storied history together. And that's just the beginning. In addition to the free event, players can also purchase the Bungie 30th Anniversary Pack that includes a new treasure-themed three-player dungeon set on the Cosmodrome within the fabled Loot Cave. Players will plunder its depths to discover an exciting new Thorm-inspired armor set and fan-favorite Destiny 1 weapons like Isaluna and Thousand Yard Stare. It even has the Claymore Sword from Myth. Purchasing the pack unlocks a range of awesome bungee-themed armor ornaments and cosmetics to collect, including ornament sets inspired by the bungee 30th anniversary celebration and marathon. But the dungeon holds one more secret. The crown jewel of its weaponry is a Destiny 1 classic. Galahorn is making its long-awaited debut in Destiny 2. We're gonna take its iconic status to the next level. Galley has been carefully updated for the Destiny 2 sandbox. So, this December, join your friends and collect exclusive rewards during the Bungie 30th Anniversary Celebration. But the party isn't only happening in Destiny 2. We've partnered with Nerf Limited to create a functional, dart-firing Gallowhorn. We'll have more on that soon. And that's not all. Here's a look at some of the incredible loot we've made over the years and a sneak peek of what's coming up. Wow, Lorraine, I can't believe we're <laughs> celebrating Bungie's 30th anniversary. 30 years. It's incredible. Yeah. I mean, look, think of all the games and products that have come out over these years. Yeah, starting Operation Desert Storm, Pathways into Darkness, Marathon, Myth, Oni, Halo, and Destiny. Seven years of Destiny. It's an amazing journey. So excited, you know, we have a lot of really cool stuff coming up and a lot of other things in the works, of course, as always, but yeah. I mean, what do we have? We have the Fallen Captain statue, which is incredible. And then we have the helmet, the Celestial Knight. That thing helmet. is so cool. Yeah, and uh, my favorite, the Arcadia jump ship. Yeah, I get goosebumps just thinking about that. You know, it really gives me that nostalgia from Destiny 1. And so I think it's a great way that we're gonna celebrate not only Bungie's 30 year heritage, but the seven year heritage of Destiny. Yeah. And it definitely gives you the feels. Thank you for being on this journey with us, whether it started this year or 30 years ago. We've just started talking about the Witch Queen today. You've got our first peek at weapon crafting, our definitively Destiny campaign, the Glaive, and a year full of updates to all our light-based subclasses. All of this and more is coming alongside Savathun's long-awaited arrival front and center to the Destiny universe. The Witch Queen marks an acceleration in our story heading toward the conclusion of the Light and Dark Saga, and we're so excited for everyone to join us on this epic adventure in the Witch Queen, Lightfall, the final shape, and beyond. And the Witch Queen's gonna kick off another amazing year of Destiny with four great seasons packed with all of the narrative events and rewards that you've come to expect from us. But there's even more coming next year than just our new seasons. The deluxe edition of the Witch Queen will also include two brand new dungeons to be released in 2022. And we're also gonna be remastering another classic Destiny 1 raid and releasing it free for all players. This means going forward, starting this December with our 30th anniversary event, there will be a new piece of raid or dungeon content in the game every three months. In 2022, we will also be adding legacy rotations for raids and dungeons, meaning every week, there will be new ways to earn rewards in both the latest and greatest content and raids and dungeons from the past. 
If you love amazing in-game content, we want to prove that no other game offers more quality and more variety than Destiny 2. We hope that you've enjoyed a look into the future of Destiny 2. Witch Queen pre-orders are available wherever you play Destiny. Crossplay is live on all devices, and Season of the Lost kicks off today. See you in game. no less dangerous now than she has ever been. Prepare for what is inevitably to come.